Welcome to ATCM, the Medicine Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about torsades depointis. It's a type of uh, ventricular arrhythmia. We will see what are the features of uh, torsades and we will see how to manage torsades in emergency room. First of all, we should know what is a ventricular tachycardia. So, you can see here how to diagnose a ventricular tachycardia from ECG. So, in a ECG, if you are seeing a single large complex like this first ECG, you can see the third complex is a single large complex. We can call it a single ventricular ectopic. From ectopic, ectopic point, ventricle is firing an impulse. That produces a bizarre wide complex that is single ventricular ectopic complex. If two same type of uh, uh, QRS complex coming in a row, like you can call it as uh, couplets, there are two ventricular ectopics in a row, so you can call it as couplets. So two time ventricle is firing an abnormal signal. Third one you can see three in a row that we can call it as triplets or ill sustained ventricular tachycardia. If we have three or more similar complexes coming in a row, we can call it as ventricular tachycardia. If it is three, we can call it as ill sustained. If it is more than three, we can call it as sustained. So last ECG you should see that after first and second QRS complex which is normal, third onwards which is void and bizarre complexes, they are called as ventricular tachycardia. So ventricular tachycardia always originated from the ventricles and the rate will be mostly very high. So we can call it as ventricular tachycardia. We have already seen that uh, ventricular tachycardia can be sustained or ill sustained in the last ECG. Little more refined uh, ventricular tachycardia can be non-sustained or ill sustained if it is less than 30 seconds. So three or more consecutive ventricular complexes rate more than 120, a duration less than 30 seconds it will be non-sustained VT. But if it is more than that it, you can call it as sustained ventricular tachycardia. The problem with ventricular tachycardia is you are seeing an electrical complex in ECG but that time ventricle may not be pumping properly. So slowly patient will go to hypotension and shock if the ventricular tachycardia persists. One or two complexes are okay, they will not produce any problem for the patient. If it is continuously coming, ventricular complexes alone coming means the pumping of the heart will not occur properly. Patient will go to hypotension, shock, all complications can develop. Now you can see here a sustained VT. The important problem in the important uh, characteristic feature of uh, VT you can see uh, sometimes you will have to differentiate between a, a SVT with aberrancy and VT. I am not going to the details of that but you can see in VT all the complexes from V1 to V6 look similar. But sometimes if you are seeing a wide complex tachycardia because of SVT with aberrancy, the ECG complexes in, in V1 may be different from V6. Sometimes V1 may be negative, V6 may be positive. But here what you are seeing is from V1 to V6 all complexes are only in one direction, all are looking same. So that is ventricular tachycardia. So another important terminology is monomorphic and polymorphic VT. So in, a, in the first ECG what you are seeing is all these wide complexes uh, uh, complexes in that ECG tracing is similar morphology. That means all these firings are coming from same focus in the ventricle. Okay, They are ventricular tachycardia but they are coming from the same focus in a ventricle. But whereas in polymorphic VT you can see, so second ECG you can see there are different types of complexes. What we should understand is all these firings are from different areas of the ventricle. So when we are comparing monomorphic and polymorphic VT, polymorphic VTs are more dangerous than monomorphic VT. VT, VT itself is always dangerous in emergency room but in that 
polymorphic VT means multiple areas of the ventricle is firing. So, any time it can go to ventricular fibrillation. Here also in monomorphic also patient can develop complication. But comparing with these two, this is little more dangerous pathology. Now, there is another entity called as long QT syndrome. So, that also we should talk here to understand what is TOS studies. Acquired long QT syndrome is a disorder of cardiac depolarization characterized by QT interval prolongation on an ECG due to acquired causes. So, when we talk about long QT syndrome, there are two important things. One is acquired and another one is congenital. Whatever it is, what you are seeing in this ECG is Q to T, that interval is prolonged here. So, first ECG normal QT interval, second ECG QT is prolonged. This can be due to an congenital condition or it can be due to an acquired condition, uh, especially like drug intoxication and all. Whatever it is, QT prolongation can lead to torsa dyspoietis. Now, we will see what is torsa dyspoietis. The word meaning is twisting points in isoelectric axis. That means, when we are seeing an ECG complex continuous tracing, all the complexes will be in one direction, either positive or negative, either upwards or downwards. Even if it is a VT, SVT, whatever it is, in if you are taking lead to, all the complex will be either upwards or downwards. That means, either positive or negative. But here in Tosari's point is, the axis of the QRS complex will be continuously twisting up and down. So, that is uh, Tosari's point is. So, QT interval prolongation can lead to this Tosadis D point is. Tosadis D point is, is a type of ventricular tachycardia. Sometimes it is preceded by long QT. Long QT can be acquired or congenital. Now, when we are talking about ventricular tachycardia, one more important thing we should understand is most of the patients who is having VT, ventricular tachycardia, ventricle is beating in a fast rate, but the rhythm is originated from ventricle itself. So, the contraction of the ventricle may not be proper because of tachycardia. So, patient can most of the time they can go to hypotension shock, but some patients are stable even when they have VT and most of the patients are unstable. That means, patient can have altered behavior, patient can have hypotension, patient can have shock, patient can have chest pain. So, many uh, problems can occur during this VT. They are called as unstable VT. Now, you can see here the difference between simple ventricular tachycardia and a torsadis D point is ventricular tachycardia. Simple ventricular tachycardia like I to, uh, told you in the previous slide, it is only in one direction. So, here only similar type of complexes you are seeing throughout this lead. So, rhythm strips are normally taken lead 2. So, here lead 2 is taken, you can see it is only one direction. But whereas in torsadis, it is the axis is going initially down, then up, then down, then up like that the axis is twisting upwards and downwards. So, on the isoelectric line, it goes up, it can go down, that is torsadis D point is. Now, QT interval we have already discussed. So, when we are uh, reading the ECG to ECG, you can understand easily that the normal QT is less than half of the preceding RR interval. So, you take the RR interval, QT should be in less than 50 percent of the total RR interval. Like that very easily we can pick up QT is prolonged or not, but most of the newer ECGs you can see QTC will be corrected QT interval will be written there. If it is uh, more than 440 milliseconds in men or 460 milliseconds in women, it is prolonged. More than 500 QTC is associated with increased risk of torsadis pointis. If it is less than 350, it is short. We are not discussing about short QT here. We are discussing about prolonged QT. If it is more than, uh, if it is more than 450 and 460, it is prolonged. If it is more than 500, it is associated with increased risk of torsadis. 
Now QT prolongation again we can see here ECG, QT is prolonged in second ECG, abnormally long QT interval that can lead to torsadis depoindis. So here you can see the ECG, there is prolonged QT interval, you can see the QT, total QT is more than the more than 50 percent of the RR interval. So simply you can tell that QT is prolonged, now you have to see the uh, ECG paper and what is written in that or you can even calculate that. So I am not going to the calculation part here because we are discussing about uh, torsadis point is uh, so long QT are seen in this ECG. Now this ECG shows that long QT syndrome suddenly develops into torsadis D point is. This is a problem. Long QT if you are seeing a patient in emergency room, suddenly this patient can develop to develop ventricular tachycardia. So, we should be very careful when we have a patient who is having long QTs whether it is acquired or congenital. So, we can see what are the risks for QT prolongation, prolonged QT, QT prolongation with uh, some of these risk factors can develop torsadis D points. So, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia, hypothermia, myocardial ischemia, post cardiac arrest, raised ICP, congenital long QT syndrome, some medication and drugs. All these things can produce torsadis D point is when already a prolonged QT is present or it can trigger even torsadis D point is. So, there are lot of drugs which can produce uh, torsadis D point is. So, common drugs only we should remember like amitriptyline, overdose of amitriptyline, azithromycin, ciprofloxacin, citlopam, they are all antipsychotic drugs, clarithromycin, erythromycin, acetylopam, fluconazole, fluoxetin, ketoconazole, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, ondansetron. So, so many drugs in this chart you can see <coughs> ketapine, resperidone. So, many antipsychotic drugs actually can develop torsadis point. That is why whatever case we are getting in emergency room with drug overdose especially in uh, uh, like antipsychotic drugs, patient develops torsadis point is or patient can develop torsadis point is in this type of drug overdoses, we have to always measure the QTC and document it because sometimes patient can develop <coughs> torsadis D point is. So, here you have seen the QRS complex, it is wide and it is uh, twisting its axis up and down. So, that is very important. You can see QT prolongation in many ECGs and you can see many electrolyte imbalance like hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, all these things can also be there. And some of the patients who were taking psychiatric drug and they might have come with overdose of these drugs. So, all these histories are very, very important. Now, whenever patient come to emergency room, we have to take care of the patient's airway, breathing, circulation because most of these patients what we routinely see is uh, they come with uh, um, psychiatric drug overdose. So, their airway may be compromised, they may have very, very low GCS and uh, breathing part they can have uh, aspiration or aspiration pneumonia, hypoxemia. So, all these complications we should take care. And if there is arrhythmia, sometimes hypotension, cir circulation shock, all these things can be there. So, we need to put IV line. So, airway, breathing, circulation should be taken care. If there is any metabolic abnormalities in immediate point of care, electrolyte uh, testing like hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia should be corrected as soon as possible, Hypos hypoglycemia also should be corrected fast. If patient is on any medication which can induce prolonged QT or torsadis point is what was shown in the previous list, immediately we have to stop the drug. Now, one of the uh, electrolyte, uh, one of the drug uh, which is very useful in management of uh, torsadis D point is IV magnesium sulphate. We know that IV magnesium sulphate can can use in many types of arrhythmias and eclampsia. There are so many other uses for ma magnesium sulphate, uh, but here we are giving it as an anti-arrhythmic drug. 
IV magnesium sulfate is recommended to suppress the arrhythmia in patient with QT prolongation due to medication, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia and who is having recurrent torsadis D points. So magnesium should be corrected in all patients who is having hypomagnesemia and if the patient is having <coughs> long QT or torsadis point is also we have to give magnesium sulfate. Potassium also should be corrected and keep the potassium and magnesium levels uh, towards the upper limit of the normal. <coughs> so the standard regimen for adult uh, for magnesium sulfate is magnesium sulfate 2 to uh, 4 grams can be given. So routinely we give uh, 4 grams in torsadis D point is in 1 hour. Some doctors advise continuous infusion of 0 0.5 to 1 gram per hour. So whatever it is, magnesium can be either given as bolus dose of 4 grams or continuous infusion 0.5 to 1 gram per hour. But in emergency, we always prefer to give uh, as an infusion, uh, as a bolus dose, then if the patient develops recurrent episodes, then we can continue infusion protocol. If the patient is having renal failure, we should be very careful when we are giving magnesium because sometimes patient can develop hypermagnesemia because of the renal failure. And potassium also should be corrected if there is a magnesium deficiency. Most of the patients can have potassium deficiency also. So that is very important. In all patients who is having uh, pulse, we can treat with uh, torsadis D point is with pulse, we can treat with magnesium sulfate. If they have no pulse, then we have to we have to give a magnesium to control the arrhythmia. But uh, the basic treatment for pulseless uh, arrhythmia is cardioversion or defibrillation depending on the rhythm what we are seeing in the uh, ECG according to ACLS protocol. So here defibrillation and cardioversion is a major role uh, to control the patient's arrhythmia. But if there is pulse, magnesium sulfate alone can control the uh, arrhythmia. Other drugs which can be tried are mexlitin, isoprotonol, can also be tried in patients who is having uh, refractory or uh, uncontrolled uh, ventricular tachycardias in this fashion. Now, if the patient does not show any improvement, then temporary pacing uh, can be tried in, uh, in patients who is having uh, continuous uh, torsadis D pointers. Defibrillation is another strategy. If there is a pulseless VT occurs in emergency room, we can try defibrillation. So we have discussed about one of the important arrhythmia in emergency room, especially when we are managing patients who come with overdose of many drugs like psychiatric drugs. They present with prolonged QT sometimes. These patients may develop hypomagnesemia, hypokalemia, and sometimes this all together can lead to torsadis D point. That's a type of arrhythmia, that's a type of uh, ventricular tachycardia. Uh, here we can see the axis of the VT is twisting up and down. So positive and negative complex can be seen in same lead. And the treatment of choice is magnesium sulfate. If the patient does not improve or if the patient develops hypotension, shock or any signs of instability, then we can go for defibrillation or something like that, uh, advanced treatment like defibrillation or pacing can be tried. Thank you.